Hello everyone, welcome to the lesson on energy and work done. Now in this lesson, we're going to focus on work done. Well, the word work is something that is familiar to all of you. Uh, you have used this word a lot, your parents work, uh, you do work in school. But in science, the word work done has a different meaning. So in this chapter, in this video, we're going to learn what exactly is work. We're going to learn what is the formula used to calculate work done. And of course, what is the unit for work? Before we look at work, it's important that we look at a quantity that is closely related to work, and that is energy. Now, energy is the ability or the capacity to do work. Basically, the more energy you have, the more work can be done. If you have no energy, you can't do work. And that's the reason why the SI unit for energy and work done is the same. It's in joule. So one joule of energy is needed to do one joule of work. You need the same amount of energy to do the same amount of work, to do the same amount of work. So with more energy, this weightlifter will be able to lift a heavier load. Cyclists can travel faster. Even the dog can do more work here. So remember, the more energy you have, the more work is done. If you look at these two um, persons here, the girl is reading a book. And the lady here is doing a yoga, a yoga pose. Do you think they are doing work? Well, in layman term, you may consider them to be doing work. But in science, these two persons are not doing work. So what exactly determines whether something, whether an object is uh, doing work or whether work is done on them? So let's take a look at the definitions. In science, in order for work to be considered done, it must fulfill two conditions. Number one, the force must act on an object. Number two, the object must move in the direction of the force. So if, I, if these two conditions are fulfilled, then work is considered to be done. However, if you only fulfill one of the two conditions or none of the conditions, then work is not done. So remember, to for an object to be doing work, a force must be acting on the object and this object must also be moving in the same direction as the force. So let's take a look at this example again. Well, this little girl is reading and she's not moving. So it doesn't fulfill the second condition that the object must be moving in the direction of the force. The lady doing yoga pose, well, she's definitely exerting a force in order to keep herself in this position. However, if she stays put in this position and she doesn't move, then again, no work is done because the object must move in the direction of the force. Let's look at other examples. In this case, this is a wrecking ball and when the wrecking ball is being used, a force will be, when you release the wrecking ball from a certain height, it will be hitting the building this way and the wall will then collapse and moved this way as well. So the force and the direction of the object, of the wall, is in the same direction. So therefore, we can say that the wrecking ball is doing work on the building. So remember, two things. Number one, you must a force must be exerted. So in this case, the wrecking ball is exerting a force on the building. And number two, there must be movement. The object must move a certain distance in the same direction. So when the walls cave in, and move this way, then work is done. So both criteria are fulfilled. Even in this case, the leaf is said to be doing work because when the wind blow, the wind when the wind is blowing, the wind is exerting a force on the leaf, and then the leaf move in the same direction as the force. So therefore, we can say that the wind is doing work on the leaves. A few more examples. This is an interesting example. Now, imagine a waiter walking towards you and the waiter is um, holding a tray this way and the waiter walks towards you. Is the waiter doing work on the tray? Now, remember, I'm not saying whether the waiter is doing any work on himself and so on. My focus is, is the waiter doing work on the tray? So let's take a look. In order to hold the tray in order to hold the tray in this way, the waiter must exert a force 
upwards, right? So you are holding, so maybe let me erase this first. So you have to hold, you have to hold the tray upwards. So this is where the force is. So the waiter exerts a force upwards in order to hold the tray in this position. Now, when the waiter is walking towards you, the direction of this tray is this way. So this is the movement. And we ask ourselves, the force and the movement, are they in the same direction? The answer is no, because the force is being exerted upwards and the tray is being moved sideways. So in this case, the waiter is not considered to be doing any work on the tray. Let's go on to other examples and see if you are able to identify where the work is being done. What about a hammer? If a hammer is hitting a nail, would you consider that the hammer is doing work on the nail? Well, when the hammer hits the nail, the force is in this way. And we will know that the nail will go deeper and deeper into the wood. So the force and the distance moved by the nail is in the same direction. So in this case, we can say that yes, work is being done. One more example before we take a look at the formula used to calculate work done. Now this is a girl who, um, uh, having a hopper set at her back and she's crossing the road. Now in this case, do you consider that the work, uh, girl, the girl is doing work on her hopper set? Well, again, let's take a look. In order to hold the hopper set up, her shoulders has to exert a force to hold the hopper set up, right? But which way is the hopper set moving? The hopper set is moving the same way that her body is moving, which is this way. Again, they are not in the same direction. So therefore, I would consider that there's no work done. They are perpendicular, in fact. So I would consider that there's no work done by the girl on her hover set. So how exactly do we calculate the amount of work that's done on an object? The formula to calculate work done is force times distance. The unit for work is in joules, the unit for force is newtons, and the unit for the distance move is in meters. If the distance given to you is in centimeters, please remember to convert it. Something that is uh, important for you to take note is that the force and the distance in this case, they should be parallel to one another. They should be in the same direction. Some of you may find this formula a little familiar because you would have remembered that earlier on, you have actually seen this formula before, that moments is equals to force times distance. So this is a formula that you have seen before. And you may start to wonder, are they talking about the same thing? The answer is no, because when we are talking about work done, the force and the, the force and the direction are in the same direction. Sorry, the force and the distance are in the same direction. However, when we are calculating moments, the force and the distance are perpendicular to one another. Remember this? You have a force acting this way. So this is your force. This is for moments, huh? And then this is your distance. And they are perpendicular to one another. But in, in this case, when we are calculating work done, the force is here and the distance is here. So they are parallel to one another. So take note of this. Uh, do not mix them up because the force and distance directions are different. So let's take a look at some of the examples uh, on how you can use this formula. Example one, a woman is pushing the wall with a large force. Do you think this woman is doing any work on the wall? Well, again, remember our formula. Our formula for work done is force exerted by the woman multiplied by the distance moved by the wall. And in this case, certainly, this woman is pushing the wall with a large force. So there is a force. However, when you try to push a wall, the wall is not moving. So this is zero. So any amount of force multiplied by zero, you will get zero for work done. So this woman is not doing any work. If the question requires you to explain your answer, remember you have to always support your answer with 
um, the definition or a formula or a scientific law re with regards to the topic that you are, uh, the content, the concept that you are trying to um, uh, explain with. So in this case, our concept is on work. So therefore, we can answer it this way. That the woman did not do any work on the wall. So this is answering this part here. So some answering technique now that I'm uh, going through with you. So did the woman do any work? So don't forget that you have to answer this part. Say no, the woman did not do any work. So how can you explain? Well, since the question is asking whether any work is done, so what is important is uh, for you to define what is considered work done first. So work done is force multiplied by distance moved in the direction of the force. So this is your definition for work. And then you can go on to say that because D is zero, so therefore no work is done. All right. So this is how you can get full credit for questions that require explanation. It's always to support your answer with a definition of a, or a formula for the concept that's been tested. Let's take a look at example two. Um, this little boy is pushing a trolley as he walks forward. So again, the question is, is work being done on the trolley? And you are supposed to explain. Well, in this case, this little boy is pushing, exerting a force to the left this way. So the force is in this way. And the trolley is also moved, is also being moved in this way. Right? So in this case, you can say that work is done. So yes, work is done uh, because then again, you quote the formula and you say that since um, a force is being exerted by the boy and the trolley did move in the same direction as the force, therefore work is done. Let's go on to do a few more calculation questions. Example three. Now, Marie, Marie is uh, rearranging boxes and in this instance, she picked up a box and she applied an upward force of 40 newtons. So he, she applied 40 newtons to lift up the box, to put it two meters, um, to put it on a shelf that's two meters above the floor, this way, all right? So you'll notice that the force, you'll notice that the force, this is the force, this is the distance, you'll notice that both are in the same direction. So to calculate the work done on the box, you will take the force applied by Marie, which is 40, multiplied by the distance that the box has moved. So you will get 80 joules as the answer. But you have to be careful that you cannot always just multiply the force and the distance together. You have to check that they are in the same direction before you do that and before you substitute into the formula. This is another instance. So after rearranging the boxes, uh, Marie is now holding a basket of tennis ball and she stood without moving. So this is an important sentence to note. Um, she did not move. So if she doesn't move, then we know that distance is zero. So work done. I will usually write out the word work rather than using W because I do not want you to get mixed up with um, another quantity, which is weight. Usually, we also use a W for the short form. So the force uh, applied by Marie, she did apply a force on the, on the basket. So she did apply a force. However, the distance is zero. Do not be confused and do not um, you know, be misled by the question and multiply by one. One is not the distance that she moved the box because she held the basket one meter above the ground. So she did not move. We are just talking about the instance. She may have picked up earlier on, but now this question is only asking for the instance where Marie just stood there holding the box and not moving. So therefore, if she's not moving, the distance will be zero. So the work done will be um, zero joules. All right. So you could um, either explain it this way or you can also write the equation and work out the answer to be zero. Let's go on to example five. Now, example five, now Marie carries the same basket of tennis ball and because she has to exert a force to hold this basket 
and this force will be 50 newtons. That means this basket is probably, the weight is probably about 50 newtons. So you have to hold, in order to hold it up like that, you need to exert a force of 50 newtons upwards. And she started walking um, 20 meters this way. So again, if you were to take a look at the force direction, it's vertically upwards, but the distance move is actually horizontal. So therefore, this is in fact perpendicular, not parallel. So what is the work done on the basket? The answer is, the work done on the basket is zero because the basket is not moving in the same direction as the 50 Newton force. Okay? In fact, they are perpendicular to one another. So, in this case, um, you've got to be again careful because if you do not read the question carefully, you might just take 50 multiplied by 20. Okay, let's go on to the last few questions. Uh, question 6, if you push a box with 10 Newtons and you moved it 30 cm, what is the amount of work done? Well, in this case, the important thing is to take note that the distance is not given in meters, it's given in centimeters. So therefore, you have to convert it to meters over here. So to convert meters to centimeters, you divide by 100. So you will get 3 joules as the answer. Example 7. Um, a boy pushes against a wall with a force of 50 newtons. This is very similar to the same question being asked earlier about the woman. And uh, let me see, where's that question? Yes, over here, right? So this is the same question, except that for example one, you are asked to explain your answer, but over here, you are asked to calculate the answer. So calculate the amount of work done. Answer is there's no work done. In fact, uh, you should give a value. You can say that zero joules of work done, right? Since they asked you to calculate, so let's give a numerical value, zero joules since the wall did not move. There's no need for explanation here since the question uh, did not ask you to do so. Example 8. A 250 gram book is lifted 0 0.5 meters upwards at a constant speed. So calculate the work done on the book. Now, in this case, they did not tell you how much force. So the book is... Um, so let's assume this is the book. All right. And... We know that this book is lifted 0 0.5 meters upwards. They did not tell you how much force is being used to lift up the book. However, you do know that this book is a 250 gram book. Now, I can, 250 gram is the mass. So if I know the mass, I can work out the weight. So this is what I'm going to do here. W equals to mg. I convert this to kilogram first. Uh, in order to use the formula, the mass must be a kilogram. So 0 0.25 times 10, I get 2.5. So now, after working out the weight, what I do know now is that this book is being pulled down by the earth. So the weight is 2.5 newtons. So I know the earth is pulling the book down with a weight of 2.5 uh, newtons. And therefore, in order to lift it up, I will need a force of 2.5 newtons. This is the minimum force. I can exert 3, 4, 5, 6. I can exert a force that's bigger than 2.5, but minimally, I need to exert 2.5 newtons. All right, so that's 2.5. And then I multiply by the distance. I get 1.25 joules as the answer. And this force and this distance, they are parallel. So therefore, uh, I can multiply them. Example 9. Uh, for example 9, I know that the box, there is a box being pushed. A box is being pushed by a force of 8 newtons. However, the distance has not been given in the question. But I do know the speed and I also know the time taken. So this is when you have to use some of the common uh, mathematics or science formulas that you have learned before uh, may not be specifically taught in this chapter, but you are expected to, to be able to use them when need be. So you should know that um, distance is speed times time. So 3 times 5, then you know the box would have moved 15 uh, meters. All right. So the distance 
is 15 meters. So force times distance, and you'll get 120 as the answer. Let's go on to um, question, uh, sorry, example 10. Now in example 10, the box is being pushed by a 5 Newton force, and this box weighs 2 Newtons. Now, when you are given the weight of the box, you need to understand that the weight is actually acting downwards, right? So weight is gravitational force and it acts downwards. And the question says it's, it moved uh, 3 meters in 10 seconds. So calculate the work done by the 5 Newton force on the box. Now, the work done by the 5 Newton force means that we are talking about this force over here. So then we can multiply by 3, we get 15. What is the force? What is the force? What is the work done by the gravitational force on the box? Now, in this case, I don't know why there's a 20 here. <laughs> Not important. So what is the work done by gravitational force? Now, 2 newtons is our gravitational force, right? So this is our gravitational force. Is there any work done by the gravitational force? Well, the gravitational force is acting downwards. Did the box move downwards? No. The vertical distance is zero. Gravitational force acts downwards, but the box did not move downwards. So therefore, the work done is zero because the box did not move in the direction of the gravitational force. So, part C. If the ground is rough and the box experienced a frictional force, so now you are seeing more and more um, more and more forces given in this question, right? So you know that this box, the, the gravitational force for the box is uh, 3 newtons, the friction is 2, the applied force is 5, but do not, do not um, get confused. Usually, if you read the question carefully, you will know which force you are using for your calculation. So let's read the question carefully. The question says, how much work is done against frictional force? Now, friction is here, it's 2 newtons. So in order to push the box, you, although you exert 5 newtons, you need to use 2 newtons out of these 5 newtons to overcome friction. So the force that you need to overcome friction is the amount of frictional force. So that's 2. Okay, so I repeat, if the friction is 2, in order to be able to in order for the box to be able to move, you need to apply two newtons to overcome the friction. So two is, is the force applied. So then the box is actually moving three meters in the opposite direction from the friction. So three. Okay, because we are talking about against frictional force, that means in the opposite direction from frictional force. So then the answer is six joules. So I've come to the end of um, the lesson on work done, you can continue the rest of the videos to find out more about energy and its conversion. Alright, so do watch out for the other videos.